welcome to the St. James United Methodist Church. Today is the third Sunday of our Risky Business Lenten worship series, a series that reminds us that as we reflect on our faith and as we grow in generosity, there can be risks, but they are guided and encouraged and modeled for us already by Jesus. And so we enter this time of reflection and generosity with open hearts and open minds. Today is also a communion Sunday, our first Sunday in March. And so you're invited to join us for the traditional Moravian love feast here uh, during our online worship. And for that, we ask that you have a cup of water, a piece of bread, a candle and a Bible handy. Uh, that you might participate in this uh, worship with us. Um, if you are also um, interested and uh, feeling safe to come to the church to receive communion in person, we will be here from 9.30 to 10 this morning uh, to come into the sanctuary. Please wear a mask and maintain physical distance to receive the bread and juice and to spend time in prayer uh, before returning home. 9.30 to 10 for in-person communion. As we prepare for worship this day, let us take a brief look at our announcement page printed in your bulletin. Um, our online worship is continuing for the next few weeks. Uh, you may have noticed you received a survey this week in your email. Uh, please answer the questions in the survey. There are six questions total. Uh, as we try to gauge uh, our shared safety and readiness to come back for in-person worship, perhaps by Palm Sunday, uh, perhaps by Easter Sunday. Let us know uh, what your heart is telling you so that we might make a responsible decision together uh, during our council meeting on the 9th. Um, our Wednesday morning Zoom meetings continue, our Lenten book study continues, and uh, if you are saving aluminum can tabs or glasses or any of the various collections that we uh, maintain here at church, please be sure to bring those items into church so that we might pass them along. And now if you have prayer concerns or, or requests, if you um, have announcements to share, uh, please let the office know and uh, we'll be sure to include that during our announcements next week. But now, let's prepare ourselves for worship by taking that deep breath and remembering who and whose we are and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Precious Lord, take my hand Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on. Risky Business, that's the title of our Lenten worship series. It could also be the subtitle of Jesus' teachings during Holy Week. Pharisees tried to trip him up with a question about taxes. The scribes asked him for a Cliff's Notes version to the 613 laws outlined in the Old Testament. And the disciples were just minding their own business one day when they got a lesson on generosity from a poor widow. When Jesus calls us to follow him, we too can expect a few lessons along the way. We can expect to be challenged in our faith and in our practice. We may have mixed feelings about that. 
especially if we come to church for peace and quiet and companionship rather than lessons and challenges. But in every case, Jesus' teachings make us better people and better able to love God and love one another and better able to be his church. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We come here to encounter the teachings of Jesus. Many wanted to destroy him for these teachings, and sometimes we too find his words challenging. Forgive us, God. Let us be shaped into new people, made in the mold of justice, not the stamp of Caesar's coin. You entered our story through Jesus. Now help us to enter fully into the story of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silence. Know this, there are people whose lives have been changed completely by the story of love and passion. Transformation is possible. We are forgiven and freed, encouraged and loved by a God who wants us to live fully through Son and Spirit. kids. We hope that you had fun making your cross last week. Did you make it? Do you know why Christians wear cross necklaces or crosses? We do that because we want to show that we love and follow Jesus, that we're disciples, just like Peter, uh, who was a fisherman, and then he followed Jesus, and just like Matthew, who was a tax collector, and he followed Jesus, and Mary and Martha, Jesus' good friends. When we wear a cross necklace, we're showing everyone that we love Jesus. But our story this week is about some people who did not love Jesus and did not show love for him. In fact, just the opposite. The Pharisees, they were trying to trick Jesus by asking trick questions. They pretended to be his friends, but they weren't. They were smart and powerful, they knew that Jesus was even smarter and more powerful and also kinder and more loving. And so they asked him trick questions and tried to trip him up. But do you think it worked? Nah, Jesus didn't fall for that. Pastor Lynn is going to read us a story, but she's going to try to trick us just like the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus. Yep. So we're going to listen. And every time we hear something that's not true, we're going to make a buzzer sound like this. Bzzz. Okay? <laughs> so you have to listen carefully. All right. All right, Pastor Lynn, we're ready. You ready? I'm ready. Here goes. The Pharisees didn't care much about what Jesus said or did. Bzzz. No. Is it true? No. <laughs> they were watching Jesus very closely. And so they sent spies to pretend to be his friends and to play soccer with him. Bzzz, no, <laughs> the spies pretended to be his friends to trick him. They wanted to trap Jesus with his words so he would take them all out for ice cream. Bzzz, no, so they could get him in trouble 
and hand him over to the authority of the governor. They asked him, teacher, we know that you are correct in what you say and teach. You teach God's way as it really is. So does the law allow people to ride camels to school? <laughs> they asked, does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Since Jesus knew they were trying to trick him, he said, show me a picture of your grandchildren. <laughs> he said, show me a coin. Whose image and what inscription does that coin have on it? The Paw Patrols, they replied. <laughs> no, it was Caesar's. Caesar's picture and words about Caesar. Jesus said to them, so give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. The Pharisees had totally outsmarted Jesus. Bzz. They couldn't trap him with their, with their questions and they couldn't make fun of Jesus in front of the people. In fact, they were surprised and impressed and astonished by Jesus' answer. And they were so excited, they started breakdancing. <laughs> no, they were speechless. They had nothing to say. So, sometimes even now, people try to trick us or try to make us look bad or get caught up in our words somehow. What should we do if that should happen? Should we get mad or should we try to get even or try to trick them back? No, what would Jesus do? What did he do with the, with the Pharisees? He answered their question wisely and kindly and faithfully, and then he moved on. And maybe that's what we should do too. So now you can watch your mailbox for another fun package. And this is a sign that Easter is coming soon. And that's a hint. Oh, something about a sign. Let's have a prayer. Gracious and loving God, you give us Jesus and his words to guide us that we might live good lives and not be tricked or made to look foolish, but to always trust you and to trust your guidance. Help us to be more like Jesus every day and help other people too. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The painting before you is called The Tribute Money by Joseph Tiso. We see Jesus surrounded by Pharisees outside the temple. One is presenting something to him. The others are watching carefully. It's a coin, a denarius. The, Philip, the Pharisee is pointing to the coin in his hand. Jesus is pointing to heaven. Give to God what belongs to God. Here we see a man at the back of the crowd, shielding his eyes, straining to see and hear and understand the lesson Jesus is teaching, a lesson we still struggle with. To whom or to what do we owe allegiance and how do we pay it? Jesus kept showing up at the temple that week, even after the skirmish in the temple market. You'd think he would have backed off, laid low, stayed out of the way. His name was on the watch list for sure, and it had been for some time. I hear that even when he was born, he was perceived as a threat. That's what I hear, though it was before my time. My allegiance is to Herod, and I've been placed here to help oversee the Jews this week. This Passover party here in the city makes me so nervous. The place is packed. We were instructed to see if we could get this Jesus to say something that would prove he means to harm the state, that he will encourage people to disobey the Roman laws, or that he will create a rebellion that will get ugly. So we were instructed to catch this guy saying something we can charge him with. They teamed us up from, with some Pharisees, 
Jewish priests that oversee the rules for their own people. These particular priests are no more than spies, I would say. They want him to shut down as much as Herod does, but they lay it on thick, I tell you, cozying up, telling him he's such an amazing teacher. I decided to stay out of the way. It actually makes my stomach turn, all this deceitful stuff. I'm sure this guy will go off the rails and end up in prison or worse. I just hope it's over quick. What did he just say? Huh, this is something. He's got the Pharisees reaching into their pockets to get a denarii. Ha, huh. I'll be, this guy is good. Nothing wrong with that answer. They won't be able to get him today. Actually, I'd have to say I'm curious. There's something about him. I wouldn't mind hearing more. Perhaps I'll volunteer to keep an eye on him. Although what I really want to do is just be around him and hear what else he has to say. There's just something about him. Temptation, love, and generosity. Pharisees, scribes, and disciples. These are the subjects and students of Jesus' last teachings. Of all the things he might have focused on instead, these were among his last lessons. How to shrug off temptation, why our love lives matter, and what generosity looks like. Why didn't Jesus use this precious time to explain the space-time continuum, or UFOs, or Stonehenge, or Atlantis, or how Zoom really works? For that matter, why didn't he just flat out tell us the meaning of life once and for all? Well, maybe he did. And our challenge is to hear it. Please pray with me. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts open our ears to the truth and challenge of the teachings of Jesus. Amen. So how does Jesus handle temptation? In the wilderness, from his disciples, and even in the temple, he sees it, faces it head on, and shrugs it off. In our gospel story today, Jesus is confronted by a clutch of Pharisees who are eager to trip him up. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? They ask, their eyes glinting in the sun. If Jesus says yes, he'll alienate all who despise their Roman overlords and refuse to acknowledge the emperor as divine, which is what was inscribed on the Roman currency. But if he says no, of course, he'll put even more people at risk for swift and terrible retribution at the hands of these Roman authorities. Thanks to the painting by Joseph Tiso, we can imagine the Pharisees straining at the bit to hear Jesus' answer and then to pounce. And we can imagine Jesus looking them straight in the eye, providing a frustratingly wise answer and moving on. Challenge number one, we think temptation requires a yes or no response, but Jesus shows us a better way. Face it, name it, confound it, and move on. Jesus taught other lessons that day. What about his lesson on love? The one we call the greatest commandment. Love, you, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This two-part commandment functions like a pair of glasses, two lenses through which we see the world and our lives more clearly, our love lives, if you will. For Jesus' greatest commandment focuses all 613 laws of the Old Testament on who and how we love as his followers. Challenge number two. 
We think love is something we fall into, but Jesus shows us a better way. Loving God and loving neighbor is a conscious choice. Temptation, love, what was the third lesson? Generosity. The story of the widow who gave all she had, two mites, two small copper coins, to participate in God's work through the temple. Now Jesus points her out to his disciples, see that woman? She put in more than all the rest, for she has given all that she had, and they gave the leftovers of their wealth. I'm paraphrasing, but we get the point. The widow's generosity meant nothing to the temple's huge budget. But for her, it was a vital part of her covenant with God. When we join the church, we make a covenant of generosity with God too. We promise to support the ministry of the church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Challenge number three. We think generosity is an option, but Jesus shows us a better way. Our giving is always to God. It's only when we understand that that we truly become generous people. Temptation, love, and generosity. If not the entire answer to the meaning of life, they do challenge us to live differently. And changing how we live is risky business. So it's not a coincidence that risky business is the name of our worship series this year for Lent and for stewardship, because each of these challenges us to change in order to grow. And we are growing. In your letter from the generosity team this week, were you surprised to read that each month our food pantry provides over 3,000 pounds of food to feed our neighbors? The pantry is growing to meet the growing needs of our neighbors. And the clothes closet is growing too and opening Saturdays to serve more people. Technology has helped us to grow in weekly worship and in fellowship. And despite COVID restrictions, our sewing, knitting, and collections ministries continue to grow as well. Our discretionary fund has been particularly helpful and effective in helping people make ends meet when perhaps they've been out of work or need extra help for any number of reasons. And that's all good news. And there's more. Remember the ministry action plan that came out of our discernment with Rick McKinley in 2018? There were two parts, to expand and relocate the food pantry and to expand and grow ministry with children, youth, and families. The first part has been completed and celebrated. Now the second part has been envisioned. A brand new community arts ministry is planned for the fall. The goal is simple, to create opportunities for children, youth, and families within and beyond the church, to experience God's presence through creativity and community. An action team is already laying the groundwork, but your prayers, ideas, and helping hands are vital if this vision is to become a reality. If this vision helps us shrug off the temptation to give up because it's too big. And if this vision is built on love of God and love for our young people, and if this vision is blessed with generosity, it will become a reality. Remember Jesus' lessons on temptation, love, and generosity. Seems to me that each part plays a part in our ongoing discovery of the meaning of life right here 
at St. James. Jesus saw through the Pharisees' hypocritical questions and answered faithfully, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. As we pray about our giving this year, what is it that we're being called to give to God? Jesus recognized the scribe's question about the law and answered honestly, love God with your whole selves and love one another. As we pray about who we love and how we act on that love, let's ask ourselves, who is missing? And Jesus praised the widow's gift for what it meant to her and to her covenant with God. See all the givers. She has given more. As we pray about our covenant with God, are our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness enough? Or might we give more? These are risky questions. May God guide our answers and continue to challenge us to engage in risky business for the sake of God's people and for the sake of the kingdom of God right here in Merrimack through the St. James United Methodist Church. And let the people say, Amen. While circumstances and concern for the common good continue to keep us from gathering in person to share the sacrament of Holy Communion, we remain committed to pray and to remember that we are one in the spirit and one in the body of Christ. Please join us in this morning's centering prayer. God is with us. We are not alone. Christ is with us. The risen one has met us blessed and fed us on the road that leads us home. The community of the Holy Spirit is with us. We gather with the communion of the saints in light throughout history and with God's people around the world. With brothers and sisters absent in body but united in spirit, we pray, Holy One, Trinity of grace and power, maker and mother, beloved and lover, father and friend, Thanks be to you, O God. You are ever the Father who gives us bread, not stones. You are the mother who never forgets were her own. From the beginning of life to the closing of time, you are the one who is with us to the end. And so with all who breathe on earth and all who sing in heaven, we praise your name and join creation's song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Please join me now in lighting a candle. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. You are our risen Lord, in whom light has conquered darkness. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Please lift and hold your Bible. Here in our hands is the story of God's covenant of steadfast love with God's people. 
we are assured of God's presence with us at all times and places, even when we are isolated, frustrated, and vulnerable. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Please lift and hold your glass of water. Without water, there can be no life. We are nourished in the water of the womb. We were baptized by water and the spirit into God's family. Water reminds us of the gifts of life, love, and grace that God has given us so abundantly. Let us drink water together now. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And so please lift and hold your piece of bread now. Christ broke bread and fed the multitudes. Christ broke bread and formed a new covenant with his closest friends and with all who break bread in remembrance of him. Bread reminds us that just like individual grains of wheat are gathered together to make one loaf, we who are scattered are one body in Christ. Let us break and eat bread together now. Remember the times you have received bread in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Remember those who gathered with you. Remember the presence of Christ in that moment and be assured that Christ is with you in every moment of your life. Take a moment now to sit silently and allow Christ's love to surround and fill you. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and within you now and forevermore. And let us say together, Amen. Amen. Please join me now in a spirit of prayer as we lift the names and needs and joys of our brothers and sisters within and beyond our faith community. Gracious God, today as we pray together, we hold carefully and gratefully Carol's first husband, Cal, who has uh, been released from the hospital and is now in rehab. We pray for his continued strength and healing. We pray for young Millie as she continues to battle anxiety and for all for whom this COVID time has brought much anxiety, isolation and frustration. And we lift little Piper, who has experienced a broken arm this week while tubing with her big brother, Porter. She is wearing a purple cast and doctors say she will heal quickly and completely. And we give you such thanks for that. We are also so grateful for the availability of the vaccines that will help us to overcome COVID-19 and to slowly and steadily return to being together, uh, return to community for which you have made us. We miss one another and we miss worshiping with you. And so we are very grateful for the ways that you are bringing us back together. And for a thought that was shared during this week's coffee fellowship by Zoom, the thought that perhaps these challenging situations are blessings in disguise that God, you are somehow helping us to manage and, and navigate our way through in order to grow in compassion. And as we grow in compassion and in love for one another and for you, our response can be nothing less than gratitude. And so for those we pray for and for those situations we lift up and give you thanks for, 
we pray this day in Jesus' name, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Nancy Bird is another member of our generosity team. This week, she'll share with us her reflection on the challenges of Jesus' final teachings, teachings about temptation, love, and generosity. Do these old stories have anything to teach us today about giving to God what already is God's? Absolutely. So Jesus kept returning to the temple, even though it was dangerous. Pharisees and Herodians joining up forces to trip him up, asking him if it was right to pay the taxes to Caesar. But Jesus knew this was a trap. If he said yes, he would be, de be disloyal to uh, Israel. If he said no, he undermined the state, and that would come with severe consequences. But he said neither, and instead replying in a way that silenced his enemies, and at the same time taught a spiritual truth. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. He took on the challenge and answered from his heart, his faith, his truth. During Lent, we're challenged to give something up or start something new that may feel a bit uncomfortable. This year, we've moved our stewardship time to co coincide with Lent as a challenge to grow in generosity. We're asked to answer the challenge with prayerful consideration from our hearts, from our faith, from our truth. One thing I've come to realize about this challenging year that we've just experienced is that I can do it with a lot less and be perfectly content. Eating out less, less shopping, less stress from just owning stuff. I also realize how fortunate I have been to be able to continue working throughout this time. I know there's more need than ever for the things that the Mission St. James provides. Food, clothing, online worship, to keep us feeling the love of God and the community of our family of, of church members. And so I will challenge myself to grow in generosity this Lenten season so that we can continue to do the good works here at St. James within and beyond the church. Years ago, uh, my son had a friend whose home situation was less than ideal. So during his senior year, it was especially chaotic and he came to live with us from time to time. My husband actually hired him that summer and taught him a skill that he carries into his adult life today in his work. When my friends learned that he was living with us, they were, they were surprised that I was taking on another teenage boy. Uh, and I said, you know, everybody needs a safe place to land. It's a lesson I learned from my parents as they did this for a friend of mine during my high school years. Everybody needs to know that for certain, they have a warm bed to sleep in, a hot meal on the table, clean clothes, and somebody to listen to. For, the, for so many, the church is that place. We provide a spiritual home. We provide food when needed, clothing, and a safe place for people to worship and be with other people who want to share the love of God. And so this is why I strive each year to grow in generosity so that I can help more people be a part of that. Please join me in the prayer of dedication of gifts and tithes. Oh God, we ask your blessing on the gifts we bring this day and on our commitment to being your generous people. We ask your blessing on gifts and givers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. you my friend
And so let us go forth now, brothers and sisters, to love and to serve the Lord who challenges us to be faithful and generous every day, not just during Lent. Let us go forth remembering, serving, and loving the Lord. And let the people say, Amen.